All uh, right, I believe we are live. We should have wrote. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we should have wrote like a a jingle, like a an entry jingle. Oh, that can that can come further down the line, mate. Once the uh, <laughs> once the donations start rolling in, you know. Yeah, maybe. Once we'll the funding just give in for someone to write as a jingle. <laughs> so anything that um, happens from this point, then we've deemed it fit for public consumption. Yeah, so <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, I'll cr- pass the guidelines. I'll crack this beer. Oh, hello. Yeah, it's actually a tribute to the last drink we probably had together. Yeah. Well, cheers. Cheers, bro. What are you? What are you? Oh, is that that limoncello sour? It's what? a limoncello sour. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like it could go one of two ways. It's from Black Sheep Brewery, North Yorkshire. Oh, strong. Right, this could either, yeah, this could go one of two ways, so. Verdict. <laughs> it's sour. It's sour. <laughs> oh, I mean, eh, you know, I feel like, I feel like I might warm to it. Yeah. It's a bit of a weird one as the first drink of the day, but. Yeah, the last yeah. time we probably had a drink together was what, like, a month? I can't even remember the last time we had a beer together. Last time we had a limoncello together was probably the last time we were behind a bar, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's almost a month, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you want to kick things off then? Do you want to do a little little intro? Yeah, if you want. Um, I suppose we should say hi to everyone. That's yeah, Absolutely. All, All the ten days. viewers that we're gonna get, <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, so, do you, you're much better at speaking about yourself than I am. So, do you want to intro first? Um, you... I mean, sure. I've not got anything <laughs> planned, but um, that's the idea. Yeah, true. But <laughs> again, I'm not sure how good of an idea that is. You know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, I know I like to talk, but. We more often go on tangents that <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Um, so yeah, my name is Jack. So I'm one half of uh, Just to Run With It, along with Mr. Andy over there. So the better half, you're the better half. I can't deny it. I can't deny it. So I'm actually quite like a late bloomer to the hospitality industry. So I'm now 27, even though I look. A little bit older, especially with this haggard uh, isolation beard <laughs> I've got going 55 on. At least 55. <laughs> yeah. So I've actually only been in hospitality for just shy of four years. Um, so when I first got into it, I joined Smugglers Cove in Liverpool. So that's where both me and Andy are based. Um, and through Smugglers, that's where I met Andy, along with a lot of other people along the way. And kind of right off the bat, my eyes were open to a whole new world when it came to hospitality. Like, I I always enjoyed being in bars. I always liked being sociable. Um, but certainly being on the other side of the bar um, and very much getting, like, a newfound respect for what it was all about, uh, whether it be knowledge on spirits, wines, beers, cocktail making, just general showmanship, uh, the full work. So that's basically where I've been based for the last three and a half years. Obviously, in that time, myself and Andy, we've tried to kind of get involved in other things outside of that space um, and more so in the last kind of like six or 12 months with movements that are happening in the run world particularly that are very exciting, which I'm sure we'll get onto at, at some point. Uh, either in this or in future chats that we have I'm sure Um, yeah it's there's certainly a lot of interesting and exciting doors that are opening Um, not just for us but for for everyone in hospitality and I think that the the current situation very unfortunate situation has at least kind of highlighted some some positives within our industry you know like I never realized just how close knit everyone really was. There's a lot of very charitable stuff going on. There's a lot of like leading figures in the industry that are, you know, kind of putting out free content, having interesting chats, um, 
there's very charitable organizations that are, you know, funding people that are struggling and stuff like that. So don't get me wrong. I love this job, but there's definitely days, isn't there, where if you feel a bit underappreciated, <laughs> but uh, certainly in this, in this recent global situation, it, it definitely doesn't feel like that. Um, I'm sure you'd agree, but I've been very impressed yeah, from what really. I've seen um, from bartenders all around the world. Um, I'm sure it's the same with chefs as well and just general businesses that are, you know, um, bars, restaurants, pubs, everything all around the globe. It's very, it's quite uplifting to see, you know. It's nice to see everyone coming together a little bit, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Regardless mm. of... If you're and for me personally... No, oh, sorry, go on, go on. No, I was just saying, like, if you're in hospitality or not, it's nice to see everyone kind of coming banding together a little bit and you know maybe maybe people start appreciating coming to bars a little bit more yeah yeah it's uh, it's been very jarring for me personally because i i really like interacting with people the whole social side of it is is very big and like don't get me wrong doing stuff like this is great having watched loads of facebook lives instagram lives people doing you know, spirit-based stuff or drinks-related um, podcasts or just, you know, general um, – the way to describe it. You know, just like these daily or weekly little video clips that people are putting up themselves or others or articles people are posting, stuff like that. It's all great, but, like, the – the physicality, you know, like being face-to-face -face with someone, having an actual drink with someone <laughs> in yeah. person, um, getting to chat about stuff that you really – passionate about and enjoy there's a whole other dimension that has just been completely swept from from under our feet and then on top of that obviously not not knowing necessarily when we're going to get the chance to jump back into it kind of sucks I don't know about you but I'm like I'm I'm still making drinks at home you know but it's just not the same like it I'm, I'm itching to kind of get behind a, a bar again and be in like a busy environment and um yeah, who knows how long that's going to be. I'm hoping sooner rather than later, um, but... Well, fingers crossed, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. I think it's... Um, it'd be nice to... Uh, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to going back because I feel like we might be quite busy, like, mm. straight, straight off the bat, so... Yeah. Well, like, I guess it could go one of two ways, right? It's, like, either people, for a start off, are quite tentative about it and... I'm, I'm sure that it's not going to be a case of just snap your fingers and everything's back to normal, you know. I imagine it's going to be staggered and it's going to take time. Um, and there's obviously a lot still to kind of unfold with the whole situation. But um, I'm hoping that, yeah, when the time is right and it's safe to do so, that there are busy bars again and, you know, and everyone's kind of like, like you say, just appreciating it maybe that a little bit more. I know I will. I'm just going to appreciate seeing people in, in general. Just yeah. having actual face-to-face -face <laughs> conversations is going to be crazy. So um, that See right there, thing. that last few minutes is a prime example of <laughs> how I could go off on a tangent very, very quickly. It started yeah. off with me explaining who I am. I think that's probably quite a good, um, quite a good starting point. It's a solid there. example of who you are as a person, Jack. There you go. So I'll pass it over to you, mate, so I can... I actually am warm into this limoncello sour, you know. Oh, that's good. It's not too bad. Don't get me wrong, it's not... Um, Does it taste it's like not part with the good stuff, but with the real... With the, uh, yeah, with the legit limoncello. You the can't... Food. How many times do I have to tell you you can't drink limoncello out of a can? <laughs> hey, hell. We tried something new at least, so <laughs> could tick that off the list for today's chores, you know. Yeah, well done. Um, yeah, go on, fire away. Yeah, so I'm Andy, uh, the other half of Just Run With It. I've been working for a little while in bars now, probably coming up to seven years, maybe. I'm getting old. Very old. <laughs> um, and I've done a few things. I've worked for New World Trading Company for uh, a little while, kind of done some odd jobs here and there. Well, yeah, I think my job title's changed more than probably anyone else's, I think, over the years. Um, and at the moment, I am just based in Smugglers with Jack, having a, a wonderful time, drinking loads of rum, mostly. 
occasionally we'll, we do make some drinks as well. Um, but it's certainly a lot of a lot of fun causing trouble most of the time. <laughs> I mean, anyone that knows us will probably agree with that. But anyway. Um, no, no, no. I, I, I would say that we are two um, two stand-up young gentlemen. <laughs> Youngish. Very well uh, behaved. Uh, most of the time. Most of the time. Uh, um, but yeah, kind of the idea behind this whole thing is basically we kind of we started this this Instagram page kind of a little while ago, probably about six months ago, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, certainly the idea for it has been in the last kind of six or nine months, and then we've we never really had a set idea about. Well, it's hard to explain. We obviously we're very passionate about rum, but we're passionate about all spirits in general. And I think certainly in more recent times, one of the things that has been very interesting to discover is that a lot of people within the industry are really passionate about what they're doing. So whether it's rum or whether it's another kind of spirit or, you know, um, brewers making beer or people, uh, I mean, you could, the list is too long to to name really, isn't it? People that are involved in all these different stages um, within this kind of industry whether it's people actually producing the spirits or the beer or the wine, whether it's the people that are selling it, you know, and you've got like brand ambassadors and reps traveling around. Everyone's really, really passionate about it and they all kind of have their own take. And people that we've met certainly in the last kind of 18 months, couple of years, uh, predominantly in the wrong world, naturally, because they're the ones that are coming into to our place of work or inviting, it, you know, inviting us to events and stuff like that. Found that everyone is just, super super passionate and interested and people seem to just have so much time there's countless occasions when we've arranged to meet up with people and just you know for for no real reason other than the fact that they really enjoy what they're doing and they're passionate about what they're doing and they want to spread the word you know they'll come and see us sit down um talk us through some some new and interesting things that they've got um you know, and just kind of get our feedback on it and, and see what we think. And it's all yeah. really with the general intention just to kind of like spread the word, right? Just to introduce people to new and, and exciting stuff. Yeah. So, I think, go on, go on. I think that's kind of um, part of the reason why we probably like it so much is even the people that are kind of predominantly in sales roles within like the room industry are all really kind of passionate about it as well yeah for sure for just sure. like trying to sell <clears throat> any old nonsense to people it's it's a bit more about kind of a culture that goes along with it and everyone seems like a pretty nice person that we've met oh so yeah far. definitely definitely yeah. and therefore with the instagram page it was something that we we knew we wanted to focus mainly on rum you know hence the the pun name but I think the idea was was that anything that we came across that we liked, enjoyed, any events we went to that we found interesting or wanted to big up, we kind of wanted to feature all of that, right? We didn't really want to limit ourselves to one specific thing. I would like to think between us, we know a little bit about rum. There's obviously so much to learn and there is always new and interesting developments that are happening even right now. Um, that we're trying to keep up with as much as possible. But that is one of, again, it's one of the things that keeps it so interesting and so fresh that there's just all, there's so much information out there. There's so much stuff happening all the time. Um, and therefore, as a result, it makes our lives easier because we've always got new stuff to to try to talk about, you know, whether it's with that, each other, with customers, friends, you know, it's, uh yeah. Uh, it's very much like it seems like it is the beginning of at last people have been saying for years you know rum's like going to be the new vodka a long time ago and then rum's going to be the new gin for the past five five years or so and i mm. think it, we're starting to get to that point where it's it's actually happening i think which is quite exciting i think we're on like the beginning of the even the, like even steeper upslope of it all i think mm. um which is good but 
you know, well, we we would spoke about it. Something that came up the other day um, about sort of misinformation, a lot of misinformation being out there and stuff that mm. isn't necessarily factually correct that yeah. people are reading about or you know seeing or being told about by someone else or something like that. And um, it's not good, you know. It's not good to get that sort of. It's not good for Rum's reputation as a whole, I don't think. Um, yeah. And we just want someone to, you know, we want people to drink the nicest drink possible and the drink that they're going to enjoy the most, whether mm. that be, you know, Captain Morgan Spiced or, you know, Afton 50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think I was looking at something the other day. I probably botched the, the figures a little bit, but I'm pretty sure in the UK alone in 2019, um, rum sales surpassed about a billion pounds, and yep. I think that that was around equated to around thirty five million bottles sold, something like that. I think it was predominantly white and spiced. Uh, if you're putting it into like very loose categories, yep. um, but then there have been upticks on some of the other kind of styles, you know. So I think it's it's seeing a massive growth which is very, very exciting. It obviously creates an opportunity for people to swoop in there and maybe try and make a little bit of a quick book with it, which has obviously been a big and growing fear in the rum industry. However, what has been very nice to see is the fact that that's been countered so much by other people that are, again, clearly very, very passionate and knowledgeable about what they're doing. And they're not trying to from what it appears, they're not trying to cement these laws or create these rules or regulations to gain anything for themselves or restrict other people or restrict, restrict like creativity It's purely all they're calling for is like transparency. You know, they're saying people can do whatever they want and, and keep it exciting and interesting and different, but just be honest with the consumers because that is what is so important and people should know, what they're getting, which I think in terms of like having like a standpoint, do you know what I mean? Having like a, a bar that you're setting, I think honesty and transparency is <laughs> a pretty good one to, uh, to kind of like set for yourself and for the industry. Um, and as a result, because of that, I would say, again, you know, given that I'm still fairly, fairly new to this world, even in the last 18 months, it feels like things are really, really starting to ramp up. And it just seems like there's so much going on and so much interesting stuff happening. Now, again, part of it's going to be a little bit of a bias because the more people that I get to know that are also interested in this stuff, the more that it opens up, the more that I'm kind of, uh, what's the way to put it? The more that I'm exposed to it, you know? So your, I would say you were very much my starting point on the on the the journey of kind of getting into rum in general. Oh, stop it, you! <laughs> stop. But no, it's it's true, you know. And, and there's there's a handful of people that we've worked with over the years um, behind bars. I won't name any names right now, but you all know who you are if you're out there watching <laughs> this. Which you probably are, because probably only going to be like ten people that watch you. <laughs> but um, yeah, you, you know, there's 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 people that have definitely set me down this path and it has purely been just because they've been so interested in it they've been so interested in it themselves you know what yeah. i mean so like you wouldn't have spent all the time that you spent with me just talking about rum and, and drinking and and same with cocktails as well things like that and, and beer you, you wouldn't have really spent that time doing that if you you weren't passionate about it and yeah you, you know you people aren't really doing it through there's no like um, perceived gain that they're going to get from it. It's purely just the enjoyment. And that's what I've really liked yeah. so much about a lot of people that I've met through, through doing this job. Um, so fundamentally, I think everyone wants to, everyone wants to drink a nice drink. Do you know what I mean? Everyone wants mm. to, at the end of the day, like stuff these days is getting more and more expensive, especially in bars. Yeah. So why not actually, you know, maybe pay an extra couple of quid and, have something that you really really enjoy rather mm. than having just you know a very bog standard rum and coke or something why not 
splash out and, you know, get a nice yeah. daiquiri. Well, I think that's what we try to instill in people that new members of the team that we take on when it comes to training. One of the big focal points of it is that product knowledge, that ability to offer choice. But doing it not in like a forced manner, we basically try and instill some like enjoyment and excitement and interest in the products first. Like me personally, I would have a lot of trouble trying to sell something that I really didn't like. Um, I'd rather have a lot of go-tos myself and have reasons behind why I enjoy them and then use that tool to pass and pass on that knowledge to other people. So yeah. I think it, it, it seems forced. If you, have you ever been into a bar or just spoke to a bartender and it, you know, it, it feels like they're trying to push something on you just because they feel like, I don't know whether they've got like some kind of incentive going on or they don't really know too much about the products. So they've just got like a set, you know, list of things that they will like give to you. I think the more that you understand and the, the more that you know, the more comfortable you feel behind the bar, the more you enjoy it and the more you enjoy talking about it to other people as well. I used to be terrified of like, <laughs> you know, someone like going in depth uh, about certain spirits or certain products in particular or wine used to be a big one. Like when I started in, in bars, I always thought that everyone that came up and ordered wine or asked for something specific, they knew exactly what they were after <laughs> all the time. Rookie and they mistake. would judge me on it if I picked something wrong. Um, yeah, and it just turns out that's not the case, you know. And, and the bottom line is even if people do really know what they want, it, well, they know what they want. They're just going to pick it, aren't they? They're not going to... Uh, <laughs> they're not going to question you for, for, for days about it, so... The people that actually know what they want... Are- that what they want are probably the least fussy because they'll just come up to the bar and go, right, I want this. Yeah. I've looked at the yeah. menu, I want this. But it is really nice to to kind of like try and spark that that fire in, in, in people that are that are new. Certainly behind the bar that we, we work in anyway in the Smuggler's Cove, we've got such a unique array of products and stuff to offer to people we've got all the foundations there to, to offer up that unique experience, but it's certainly the, the people at the forefront of that are the, the bartenders and the rest of the staff that, you know, we, we really try and push to give them that knowledge to, yeah, just to be able to, to offer up something a bit different. I mean, yeah, I, mean I mean, at the moment we've got what, 190 odd rooms, I think. Yeah. It's hundred. I think it's 191 give or take if a few things are out of stock or, we maybe see fit to try and include something, <laughs> something new, you know. Whoops. It happens from time to time. Um, it would be completely us not doing our job properly, though, if we if someone comes in and enjoys rum and we weren't able to offer them something that they would enjoy. Though, it's, yeah. that is, I think that is kind of the fundamental kind of element of our job, or one of is being able to provide people with a drink that they're really going to enjoy that they might not have had before, but they like a certain amount of other things that we can then use to recommend something else. Mm, Which, yeah. you know, it takes a lot of time. Unfortunately, doing a lot of research, drinking these things. <laughs> Someone's got to do it, man. That's very Someone's true. Someone's got to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, should we get on to a little bit about what rub is? Sure, sure. Um, I mean, the, you can lead the way on this one if you want, mate. You can give a little bit of a rundown. I'm sure anyone that's watching will have at least a little bit of prior knowledge. But if you want to give like the foundational stuff about yeah, what rum is, and a little bit about the history or something like that, and then we can well, talk a little bit about. Go on. We can talk about some personal favourites, you know, maybe some cocktails, some cocktail right. recommendations, I've got give people right something to do. <laughs> little personal favourite. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, well, we'll cater for everyone, do you know what I mean? Some people might not know, Jack. <laughs> sure. Well, what we were saying before we kind of decided to do one of these was that we would obviously, I mean... It's our, it's our only real kind of way of communicating at the moment anyway, doing this. So we just figured if we were going to have a chat, 
we might as well just record it anyway in case there might be some pearls of wisdom in there you never know so it's very likely that we'll do more of these and we would potentially hone in on specifics whether it comes to certain styles or certain brands or geographically um you know certain uh unique things in the run world so I think there's certainly a lot of stuff for us to cover, put it that way. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I think as well, you know, if there is anyone that does watch one of these and would like to maybe ask certain questions that we could include in future ones or certain things we could delve into, as we said when we started, we're very likely to go off on tangents 95% of the time. So at least if we've got a couple of questions that we can focus in on, you know, that, that will at least keep us a little bit grounded. So for anyone that doesn't have us on Instagram and would like to follow, it feels weird. It's the first time I've ever had to do this. So it's just run with it, all one word. And that is where you will find, yeah, mine and Andy's joint little uh, nerdy Instagram page where we post all the weird and wonderful. So, yeah, okay. anything that you would like to maybe ask yeah. or feature, just uh, drop us like a, a DM on there and we can... I'm sure that we'll, you know, follow it up in there. Or yeah, likewise, right. if you've got any drink recommendations, cocktails, beers, anything that can keep us busy during this uh, lockdown period, yeah, that'll be very welcome as well. So, um, Yeah, that's the first plug out of the way. Well done. Nailed Tick. it. <laughs> Tick. Winning. Um, yeah, so we'll discuss what rum is a little bit, I suppose. Why not? Um like Jack said, I think we've got we've got plenty of areas to cover. Um, I, meanwhile, speaking of favourites, I'm just going to pour myself a little Smith and Cross. Cheeky. It's wonderful. And it's officially mid-afternoon now, right? It's, what, four o'clock? It's like ten past four, yeah. I'm yeah, it's, hey, it's more than acceptable. Five o'clock somewhere, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, so in terms of rum, it's kind of... History, if we're talking very, very far back, um, actually stems from China a very long time ago with a thing called um, Iraq. Um, it's kind of really, it's quite hard to find these days, actually. I mean, there's a few producers out there, um, but they're not anything huge. It's not massively popular. I mean, in Asia, you'll see it quite a little bit. People tend to um, use it quite a lot in uh, sort of these countries like Bali, Thailand, where a lot of uh, people go backpacking and stuff like that. They'll uh, actually replace rum for Iraq. Um, but again, I'm sure we'll we'll get into that really. So, is it is it typically? It's not classified as rum, right? It's not officially a rum. Uh, not really. It, it's kind of, it uses sugarcane in the process, yeah, but also I think it uses some rice as well. Right, okay. Um, which kind of, it's kind of like somewhere in in, in between, but mm. I believe it's, um, I believe it's the origin, origin kind of of it all. Um, yeah, so most of the stuff um, kind of started happening, obviously with Christopher Columbus in, you know, late Late 1400s, 1490. There we go. Um, and that kind of um, that kind of really obviously kicked off a few things. It kicked off essentially cheap sugar being imported over to Europe. Um, kind of kicked off all the spice trade as well, um, amongst other things, and obviously slavery, which is a bit depressing. But here we are. Jack looks suitably depressed. <laughs> I'm just listening intently, mate. That's all it is. <laughs> listening, listening yeah. intently. So this was kind of a... Slavery was kind of basically a way of cultivating sugar very cheaply. So they could yeah. transport it back to, you know, well, mostly the UK, to be honest, um, and kind of the rest of Europe. And we could all enjoy sugary treats. But, you know, yeah, I think it's... It's a shame in a lot of ways that it has such a dark history, but I think it's a very, very poignant thing. I, I don't think it should be forgotten about that that is kind of where rum really started up, you know. Um, it's, 
I know like when we do master classes and we talk about this stuff, it's quite a quite a glum place to it's quite a glum starting point. But um you know, it, it it is what it is, and I think it is very important that uh, it's acknowledged. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 you know, it's it's obviously not a nice thing to happen, but it is it is part of the story of room. You know, um, so basically, the idea, kind of rough idea surrounding room. I mean, again, if we do any more of these, we'll probably do a whole thing on kind of a bit more in-depth on room history at some point, I imagine. Um, but the whole kind of premise surrounding room basically was um, the slaves would basically be fed molasses, which is a uh, byproduct of making granulate sugar. Uh, they'd give them, the slave, like plantation owners would give them, give the slaves, they'd water it down with some water and give them this molasses because it's still full of sugar. Uh, and some vitamins and minerals and stuff from the sugar cane itself. So basically, um, these this kind of molasses would be left out, um, kind of in open top containers, just because it was the slaves. They weren't really that bothered by it. Well, the plantation owners weren't really bothered if you know flies went on it and stuff like that. Um, so what would happen is yeast would fall on the top of this molasses and start in the sugar and charcoal. Um, they'd essentially be drinking molasses beer, really effectively. Um, that's kind of where, once kind of plantation has cottoned onto this, that they could use this essentially almost waste product in molasses to kind of make more money by making rum with it. Kind of boomed from there. And look at us now, a billion pounds worth of sales in the UK last yeah. year. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, no, so that's um that's obviously a very, very brief overview. And from that point obviously kind of technology advanced, people's understanding of distillation methods and fermentation and, and ways in which to do that were either traditionally done differently around the world and certain ideas were definitely passed around and then the more that importing and exporting became a viable option for different countries and islands and stuff started traveling around a lot more that's when this really kind of like big conglomeration of different styles and different ideas about rum kind of all all came about um i kind of on a wider social political pretty much everything scale kind of that whole from christopher columbus going over there and you know obviously discovering america and things like that and amongst other things in the caribbean it kind of really opened up the world for a lot of a lot of people you know certainly yeah. started linking europe to that part of the world and then there was already some influence from china at kind of around the same time as well so with the Silk Road and stuff like that. Um, so that kind of really opened up the actual world to everyone. It's quite cool. Yeah. Kind of, it's, it's kind of a lot bigger picture than just a rum, but... Yeah. Like, no, no, absolutely. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, from someone... From someone that came into it a few years ago having no idea and, and knowing what I know now, what would you say to someone that was completely new to rum and asked for recommendations about like, I'm, I'm sure for anyone watching this that, that doesn't really know much of anything about rum, there'll be a few brands in particular that they, they recognize. So white rum wise, they'll recognize Bacardi. If they're looking at something spiced, they'll, they'll know Captain Morgan's or Sailor Jerry's. And then if you're going darker, it will be, typically what is classified as like navy rums so they might know like lambs or woods or something like that so someone was trying to get a bit of an idea about rum styles what what is your kind of take on that like it's, it's all a bit of a gray area really for me at the moment i think it's we're coming to this sort of crossroads where I don't think you can really define white rum as just white rum anymore. 
I think there's so much variation. Like, you know, we drink some stuff that is very, very weird, but it's white rum still. You know, you, if you're classing it as white rum, then it's in the same category as Bacardi when it couldn't be further removed from it yeah. aside from the colour, essentially, yeah. or lack of. Um, this is what we were kind of talking about before with like sort of a lot of there's a lot of bits of like misinformation kind of going around or people kind of getting the wrong end of the stick maybe I think there's certainly scope for us a conversation to be had with kind of certainly at least bartenders I don't think consumers are quite ready for it yet but certainly bartenders in terms of how we start looking at rum in terms of categories I know yeah yeah. Uh, one of our kind of favourite rum people, Luke Garno, has his own kind of method of categorising rum these days, but I don't know how well that would translate into customers. Uh, yeah, it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? And it's one that there's a lot of back and forth about within the spirit category at the moment. It's trying to find that fine line between keeping it streamlined and understandable enough for the average Joe but then at the same time covering all bases and satisfying the needs and and wants of the kind of nerdier consumer. But it's definitely a starting point that, that I find myself going to more and more now when it comes to introducing people to rum. I, I always say that one thing that makes it both very difficult but very interesting to learn about is the amount of variation that's that's out there. Um, I think a bit of a misconception is, is the fact that there's like no rules and regulations to it. And there's, you know, unlike something like, um, you know, certain spirits, if you think about like cognac or Armagnac or uh, a lot of wines or champagne or, you know, scotch, bourbon, stuff like that, they've all got certain, um, st certain stylistic qualities that comes from, uh, where it's actually made, how it's produced, raw materials, you know, etc. So people think that because rum is made all around the world rather than in one specific place, um, because there are loads of different colours and styles and flavours and things, people think that there's not really much of a thread that runs through it. Uh, I don't really agree with that. I don't think that's the case. And again, it's a very important movement going on at the moment within the category, I think there's a lot of discussion about the likes of GIs, so geographical indicators, and whether certain islands and certain countries can use, um, it's essentially like a stamp of approval, right? So if something comes from a certain island, it has to have abided by set rules in order for it to be classified as, for example, uh, a rum from Barbados or a rum from Jamaica or a rum from Mauritius, uh, you know. I think that it's it's another... <laughs> it's, it gets kind of dicey, doesn't it? But it's an interesting step in moving forward and trying to provide as much transparency and honesty with the consumers as possible. Um, there are obviously people pushing back against these kind of suggestions and recommendations. There are some countries on the other hand, however, that already have the GIs in place. Uh, yeah. And it's very interesting to see that, see the shifts in opinion, but I think it's going to take a while for it all to come together. The world's obviously a big place. So. Yeah. I think um, a prime, a prime example of it going really well and really badly is um, Jamaica, got theirs a couple of years ago i think right um and i believe that was a fairly breezy process i don't think anyone had any major disagreements with it i mean there's like what six distilleries on the island like mm. big ones anyway uh, and they were all fairly on board with it from the offset i think everyone jamaica has a very distinct style shall we say um <laughs> anyway so uh they'll kind of just carry on they they'd have carried on doing what they were doing regardless gi or not really i think it's a bit more to protect outside people coming in, in jamaica and trying to make room there and calling it jamaican room 
Mm. Uh, I think the actual people that are from Jamaica that basically look after all the distilleries there, I don't think they see any issue with it. But then you look at Barbados that's got some outside interests there, shall we say, um, with sort of, you know, plantation being there and and then actually Bayesian people kind of looking after the majority of the other distilleries, I think that's when it starts to get a bit messy like it has done. And there's not, I don't, it doesn't seem like them come to an agreement anytime soon, I don't think, on, on Barbados. I, I think it's mm. going to be... I think the, the main argument seems to be, in a lot of cases, the argument against having geographical indicators is that certain manufacturers, distillers, whatever, they are concerned that GIs will stunt kind of growth within the within the category and it will also stunt some creativity whereas people that are really pushing for the gis for the stricter rules and regulations based in certain areas their main concern is that they have their way of doing things the reason why rum from from these certain areas is so popular is because of the certain stylistic qualities and where where they come from and i think that it's yeah it, it gets so tricky because it, it is just such a it is such a tightrope walk isn't it really like it's i i still personally don't fully know even where i stand with it i think i definitely much more lean I think I lean more towards having GI, so having, you know, indicators from certain countries. And I think it's predominantly because there definitely are people out there. I mean, there's people that do it now that essentially ride the coattails of success of other rum manufacturers. Oh, yeah, big time. Big time. Do you know what I mean? And, and they will try and plonk a certain region or country on their label and yeah just hope that that will do and then when the product isn't actually as good quality it gives everyone from that place a bad rep you know and if me personally if if i'd been working for for years and years to really cultivate a a good name you know and a good quality product and then that was just being completely overshadowed and ruined by someone else just kind of like jumping in there yeah, I can I can totally understand why people. I can understand why it's a very touchy subject. Yeah, per, well, personally, I think I'm all for it. Uh, I don't see essentially the GIs there. Well, let's take Barbados for example. The only reason it's there is so if you put its Barbados rum on the bottle, it follows this criteria. You can still make rum there, however the you like. Um, it's just you won't be able to call it, you won't be able to put on a bottle, it's Barbados Rum. Yeah. Which, it kind of, it just protects that name of, you know, people like Four Square Mount Gay that are kind of, you know, really trying to, trying to keep that sort of, it's almost like brand reputation. You yeah. Know? It's almost like pe people who, get a buy well certainly us too if we bought a, a bottle of rum that said Barbados rum in it we kind of know what to expect going into it I don't think I mean some other people might not but we certainly yeah. would and I think it's a bit more about protecting that yeah yeah but it's um I think that the the push to these various directions that people are moving in and the the general ideas about what they think is acceptable or what's not, what's right, what's wrong. And just this increased kind of like internationally, it feels like everyone's more connected now than ever. And as a result, there's been some like super unique and interesting stuff kind of come into the, the forefront. There's certainly been some rums and things that we've tried that are just like mind blowing. And we're obviously in a very fortunate position where we, we kind of have it at our fingertips all the time. I totally understand why someone wouldn't want to 
just dive in without any prior knowledge and try a really expensive bottle of rum or I can I can totally understand why people have certain preconceptions about white rum. I mean, I don't know about you, but some of my first drinking experiences when I was younger, it was like either Bacardi, like Gordon's Gin, <laughs> Bell's Whiskey, you know, like all the things that I, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> say are very representative of the whole category of spirit, you know, where like it would seem a shame that it seems a shame to me that the only experience people have with something like rum is, you know, Bacardi that they drank too much of when they were younger, Captain Morgan and Coke. And then they maybe try Kraken because they know they like spiced rum and Kraken looks a little bit fancier. You know, it it seems, it, it seems quite a shame when there's so many other very, very interesting and unique products out there that that is the kind of right now, the general, consensus is that they're you know some of the the most popular and, and best and representative yeah. products for this category um but it is nice to see that more and more there are people fighting against that uh yeah you know it's it's good for us like i mean i'm i firmly would put us in the camp kind of fighting against that and trying to get people to try new stuff and stuff that hopefully is made slightly better and stuff that people are going to enjoy a little bit more as well i think mm. um i think i put us firmly in that in that camp i mean there's nothing worse for me than selling somebody something behind the bar that they're not going to enjoy yeah yeah That's i think bottom line is if like some of the brands i just mentioned there like if someone likes one of these products, I would be the last person ever to, to really judge someone on it. Like I, People like what they like. I just think that people need to... It should be more clear as to why... Well, sorry to put it. I mean, oh. as long as people are drinking rum, it pays our bills, so... <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's just like... Yeah, I feel like given some of the things that we've had access to try and the amount of time, effort and care people put into this stuff, it seems yeah. a shame that people can swoop in and just do things very artificially and very sped up and not always necessarily sincere. I mean, I'm sure people that are making all these, like these mass produced rums, I'm sure that they are perfectly happy with the way they make it. I'm sure they're perfectly happy with the final products and they don't see anything wrong with it. Um, and I'm sure I'm, they're perfectly happy with their bank balance at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, like, I, I don't necessarily think that there's anything wrong with it. However, people shouldn't be claiming that that they're one thing when they're actually another. Like Captain Morgan's, right? <laughs> Due to the amount of sugar that's in there, the strength that it is, it shouldn't. I, I don't think it is. It still does it still call it rum on the on the main label, or is it a I'm is it a rum based liqueur now, or just a rum base spirit the one i always used to use um i don't even know if they make it anymore i haven't seen it for a long time it's picardi ocar mm. it was like i think it was like 35 percent. 35 yeah so on the back of it, it it was called like a rum base spirit drink <laughs> yeah it's not sexy that is it <laughs> it's, it doesn't really roll off the tongue no yeah it's not sexy i mean i i don't mind spiced rum as a category to a certain degree because it, it I do gets, find it kind of gets people in, in the yeah door. exactly it's a great gateway in I don't yeah. think it necessarily should be classified as rum because a lot of it is highly flavoured and yeah again it's it's a rabbit hole we could go down for, for hours and hours and there's, there's a lot of people that would agree a lot of people that disagree um, I think it, it certainly serves its purpose though you know and there are some good spice rums out there and then obviously as well as the kind of rum side of things the other thing we're both very passionate about is the cocktail side of things and that is something that you can really kind of like utilize in those drinks if you've got you know more rum based spirits that are flavored in certain ways that are quite unique it's very fun to kind of like play around with those when you're trying to develop um, cocktail menus and, you know, just drinks for personal consumption and stuff like that. <laughs> for personal consumption. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I mean, you look at when we were, we've been sort of um, 
design this new cocktail menu for smugglers and stuff like that. It's, um, you know, we've used quite a lot of, well, certainly a few drinks have got spice from, you know, flavoured from anyway. I know we've used like some Chem and Spice, we've used some Diabless Clementine. Yeah. Um, it's not like we we shy away from using these things. Uh, it's not like yeah. us being snobby about it, I think. Uh, yeah. But again, you see, like those two, they're, they're two very interesting and prime examples of spice rum that I would recommend to a customer that came in and they just said, I don't really like rum. I'd drink a Sailor Jerry's and Coke. I'd say, well, you know, maybe maybe try something a bit different. And nine times out of ten, the, the reaction to it is really, really good. Um, so we have returned from a little drinks break, slash smoking break, slash whatever, wee break, all the above. Well, I believe it is like, it's what, 20-odd 20, 20 degrees outside right now? It's glorious outside right now. Yeah, it's, it's actually, uh, it's like a tease, isn't it? You know? It's like, yeah. I can guarantee when everything's back to normal, it's going to be cloudy, raining. Oh, 100%, yeah. That's all, um, it's a glorious uh, Easter bank holiday weekend, but um, <laughs> when but we've all got to be inside, so when it kicks off again, it will be miserable. It'll be pissing down for like three weeks. No doubt. Um, if, I was just going to say, if you could have, if you could have one... One drink right now, cocktail-wise, that you might not have the ingredients to make. Um, what do you reckon? Yeah. Hey, that's oh, that's a very good question, Jack. You should be like a someone did an English degree. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you thinking? <sighs> See, I'm Maybe quite you know, like a zombie, like a really heavy. Yeah. Yeah, like a mai tai. A mai tai would be great. Oh, do you know what? One of those um, Appleton Twelve mai tais. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't yeah. got any heat of line. I have to think at the moment. In mine, I think the the only thing that I'm lacking from looking in my drinks cabinet is rum. Because it's kind of like the first to go. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah when, shit, when shit hits the fan, <laughs> the, the rum is the first. I'm, don't get me wrong, I've still got plenty of stuff, but I've got some like bourbon, whiskey, liqueurs. I've even got like some Aperol, a bit of vermouth. Oh, an Aperol spritz would be delicious right now. Yeah, I've got some little cans of soda as well and Prosecco in the fridge. So lucky, yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm well equipped over here. Can you like make a bucket of it and just throw it off your balcony, like into my mouth? And walk and leave it outside your gate and knock and <laughs> run, run away. Do you reckon I've got enough um, Smith and Cross to do like a, a hurricane? Do you reckon that's 120 mil? Yeah, I reckon he'd get away with that. But once that's gone, it's gone. Yeah, I don't really want to waste it on one drink. A, a little Smith and Cross flip. That'd be banging. Oh, yeah. Oh, I might do that, you know. Yeah. The is, um, our wonderful friends at the Whiskey Exchange are still delivering. God bless God bless their souls. I think they are, you know. I think they're business as usual. Business is, I believe Master of Malt is the same as well. I'm pretty sure when we were chatting earlier, we were saying about um, how it's really good that there's a lot of charitable things going on you know, within the industry. And I think suppliers yeah. like these, I've seen like special, I know speciality in whiskey exchange are kind of linked, but I know they've been speciality doing like... In, uh, Edgerton Beams and Tory, wasn't it? That were um, giving out those little packs to all Yeah, the doing like little hampers for people with like food in and stuff. And then there's been some organisations that are doing like cash donations to people and, and yeah. yeah, just like some relief funds set up and stuff like that. It's really good. It's really, really good to see. Do you know what I've just seen on here, which is new in. Oh, but so they've got. Um, it says it's, it's Dolly's three year. It calls it overproof. Oh yes, I have seen that. Um, it's like forty seven percent. Forty seven, yeah. Boom. I bet that would make a powerful. I'm not just a pretty face, guys. I'm not just a pretty face. I remember things about rum. <laughs> I bet that would make a powerful daiquiri. 
Yeah, we're probably going to have to get one of those, aren't we? All the dolly stuff is so reasonably priced. It's so cheap for what it actually is. Like, Dolly's XO, thirty three ninety five a bottle. Such good value. For the quality of the product, it's insane. That is ridiculous. Mm. Yeah, that'd be worth trying that, though. A slightly um, more potent Dolly's 3. So to get that straight, the Dolly's XO, which is, is it about eight, is it eight to twelve years? I think so. I think that's the blend. Is thirty three pounds, right? Is that on whiskey? I think thirty three ninety five. Yeah. So a bottle of Kraken on whiskey exchange is twenty five twenty five. So it's been matured. Oh, so it's been matured for at least six years. Finished in Oloroso sherry casks. It's incredibly good. It is. Um, if you want to buy a bottle of Kraken for twenty five twenty five, spend it's quite please, expensive. Spend the extra eight pounds. <laughs> I didn't happened. realize that it was that expensive. I think you you can get it for cheaper, obviously, but mm. I don't I don't think Whiskey Exchange particularly wants to sell a lot of it. So yeah, oh, when I was in the when I was in um, the US at the back end of last year, and if you go into liquor stores, they have like these crazy one point seven five litre bottles. So they've got like all the everything you'd expect. So they've got it's like Bacardi. They do massive bottles, but they do massive ones of Kraken, and it's exactly the same bottle shape. Just enlarged. Oh wow! <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't know who needs <laughs> nearly two liters of, of Kraken. I guess it's people like throwing like house parties or something. I've got one question. Go on. Are the finger holes any bigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's everything. It's just enlarged. <laughs> I it's, didn't it's think we get into this. I've, I've got a picture somewhere. <laughs> I, I won't be able to find it right now. It'll take me too long. But I will. I'll send you a picture afterwards. Because I had it I, <laughs> to do like a um, size comparison, I, I held it next to my head. <laughs> and it's, like we've strayed oh, into very strange territory. Yeah. And... <laughs> no, no, I'm just just saying, just saying. I, I don't know who needs 1.75 <laughs> liters of Kraken, but yeah, uh, I didn't realize it was so expensive, man. I thought it was still cheap, but I guess. The way it's kind of marketed is it's like it's the step up, isn't it? It's like Captain Morgan's, then you've got Sailor Jerry's, yeah. and then after that it's like cracking there, like the, the little steps up. By comparison, are probably would you say our favourite spice room? I mean is Chairman's, right? I really like Chairman's Spice, and especially for the for the price point as well. So yeah, like when you look at it, it's like twenty, twenty three, twenty four? Uh, it's gone up a touch. Um, so one whiskey exchange at the moment it is twenty five ninety five. So right. for an extra seventy pence, you could be drinking Chairman Spiced instead of Kraken. Yeah, Which is, I think the, the thing that's so nice about that is I, I'm I'm pretty sure they obviously still add sugar to it, but in terms of the, the way that it's the way that it's spiced, it's what it's like a blend of three to four year, right? And then they kind of like steep it in the last year with the almond. I think it's about six months, yeah. Yeah, almond, orange, cloves, like cinnamon, six. nutmeg, allspice and whatnot. So the flavours that you're getting from it are like really, really it's got like a very like it's like Christmas cake vibes, isn't it? But it just mm. tastes a lot more I don't know. I think the, the more that you get used to drinking these things, the more that your palate kind of detects if something isn't quite natural or not things that are a bit more synthetic or artificial it 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 does shine through uh, and i think with with a with a rum like that it's um all the flavors just seem more like i mean it's, yeah it's, more fresh, mean, you know? it's obviously it's obviously very sweet but again we understand where people are coming from when they like well, that it's, sort of yeah it's kind of it's kind of like the purpose of it right like it's yeah. sort of what they're going for and bottom line is you're not going to be able to add that element to it unless you do dose it a little bit yeah, so, yeah. i think um it's one of those things that we still drink it like you know i remember us drinking a bottle of it in what an hour and a half 
Remember? <laughs> oh, I, I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, well, I think I think it was the couple of zombies each we had afterwards that probably really finished us off. Yeah. No, I mean it's yeah. It, it works great as a. It works great as a mixer. It works great in cocktails. Um, and Come I think on, it, it's a great. Sorry, go on. Oh, sorry. I was no, say, no, go ahead. No, this is a great segue. <laughs> into, uh, it's like we're professionals at this. Uh, <laughs> it's a great segue into uh, the, probably the kind of stay at home competition that's been going on during all this thing that I am most excited about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been some like really interesting premises, hasn't there, for like, you know, um, kind of at home cocktail comps and, you know, DIY yeah challenges and stuff like that yeah but this is um so this is uh i'm talking about the chairman oh i was <laughs> i was wondering where you were going actually <laughs> we were literally talking about this before I, I feel like this is a great segue into it nice move i like it keep the transition going i mean you you've cocked it up a little bit I <laughs> by uh, where the hell are you going with this <laughs> uh <laughs> but we'll take it i mean we're new at this, so we're doing all right. Um, so this is the uh, a really interesting thing um, by Chairman's Reserve. You basically do a, um, well, Jack. I'll let you explain it while I get the website up. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, yeah. From from what I've seen so far on social media, it seems like they are doing a basically create your own spiced rum um, using chairman's as a base um so the idea is is that you are kind of tasked with devising and developing your own reasoning behind your own concept for a spice rum sort of using chairman spiced and, and the the flavors that they chose to use as a kind of like a basis to work from and i think initially you have to send off a is it like an essay of some form? I think you want to send off an essay, don't you? Talking about spices you want to use, the kind of like blend that you would want to devise, and then also a perfect serve as well that you would want to include that spirit in. And then I think if the panel of judges are happy with your kind of inspiration, then you will get sent a spice pack. And I think, if I remember rightly, I was watching this the other day, but off the top of my head, I think you get sent um, almond, orange, cinnamon, clove, Let's nutmeg, all spice. I think you get sent six, and then I think you're tasked to add three of your own and use chairman's white as a base, I think. So, um, yes, so basically you have to um, uh, basically design a concept around a spice room that you want to create, mm -hmm. essentially, is the initial preliminary stage. Um, um, basically like you have to explain like your vision, your inspiration, um, like a perfect serve for it, etc., and how and why you'd want to promote it in, in the kind of drinks community. Um, right. Okay. That's cool. And then once you've done that, like you don't have to, you don't have to submit a recipe or anything like that. So it's, it's really kind of like, I mean, you have to think a little bit about it, but you don't have to get specifics of. I, right, right, I want this, this, and this in my room. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice. And the second round is, like Jack said, um, you get to create a spice room uh, with chairman, so it can either be the normal chairman's reserve or the white. Um, and you get, in this little kit, you get sent, Jack was close, but not quite right. Close what, to did, what, did, what did I miss or what did I get wrong? Go so you got vanilla, dried orange, nutmeg, cloves, almonds, and cinnamon. Right. I, I think you said all spice in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you get to personalise your blend with three additional spices of your choosing. Cool. Uh, but you obviously get to do this at home as well, so you can experiment with different ways of actually infusing the room with these things. So you might mm. have a really obscure ingredient that you want to, you know, maybe create an essence of or do something like that it's it's quite interesting there's certainly i think you can use you can use other spirits to like infuse the spices as well is that right like you could use vermouth 
Uh, yes, other, it says, uh, one of the book points is, other higher proof rums or spirits may be used in creating spice extracts. Um, yeah. So, you know, you could, realistically, you could almost make like a some sort of weird bitters blend almost. Yeah. What I, what I did like, if I remember rightly, on the checklist at the end, the final bullet point is you can't use anything illegal. Yeah, it does say no, no illegal ingredients, so... Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, probably half of Liverpool out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. No, but things like that, it's interesting because it, it's, yeah, like I was saying to you earlier, I think the hardest things that I've found is the not being able to be sociable so much anymore, or certainly not in the way that I would like to be, you know, face to face with people. And I think also just fundamentally, like actually getting to do the job, like bottom line, I enjoy making drinks, playing around with different spirits and different flavors. These kind of like, it seems like daily, you know, tasks, little comps, things like that. It's still keeping everyone connected. It's, um, you know, getting the creative juices flowing a little bit and just kind of like challenging you to do something exciting. And I think I'm pretty sure in this comp anyway, the, some of the winners get to go to St. Lucia, right? Like, um, I think uh, that's one of the... Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, yes. Um, all expenses paid trip to St. Lucia. I mean... Yeah, you can't complain about that, right? <laughs> I have a funny feeling our good friend Dave Marsland will be on that trip somewhere. Because <laughs> he goes there about bloody six times a year. Yeah. I bet he's, well, he's, I bet he's driving, he's up the wall at the moment because he's not been there for like two months. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been sat in my flat for nearly a month. I would, <laughs> I'd be happy just to walk down to like Liverpool one right now <laughs> and do a few laps, you know. So, yeah, getting to I mean, go to a lovely island like that, I'm sure wouldn't. Uh, I mean, apart from going to St. Lucia, you do get to um, work with Chairman's Reserve Master Blender and create your own spiced room. Do you actually get to use the what you've devised to... Uh, so it is basically a winner from uh, Europe and a slash Asia, one from the USA and one from St. Lucia. Ooh. So I'm guessing three people, the three people that win and will go yeah. over there. Nice. Uh, get to collab with some other cool kids from around the world. And, uh, nice, nice. Make some delicious rum, which it sounds horrific. Uh, the winning team will be credited on this single release that should be sold worldwide. I mean, oh wow! You get your own rum. That's quite a clever little marketing thing, that isn't it? It's like you get someone else to devise something insanely tasty. Yeah. Then just I mean, yeah, fire it's out. Great countdown. There's a little countdown on there as well. Uh, so you've still got 35 days to enter at the moment. So we're on the 10th of April right now. You got 35 days. So there's cool. a little bit of time. That's cool. Bit time. Well, I mean, speaking from experience, I was in the the chairman's Mai Tai comp last year. And again, I think the way that they structure that and what it kind of like challenges bartenders to do is really, really interesting. You know, you've got a fair bit of time to devise the drink that you want to make. You get to be quite creative with it. And that Mai Tai was delicious as well, by the way. Cheers, man. And it, it takes, you know, it, it, it gets you to delve into a lot of different... Um, gets you to follow down a lot of different avenues. Like me personally, I'm happy to sit there and, and get nerdy about drinks and try out loads of different like, you know, cocktail recipes and stuff like that and specs. I'm not so good on like the kind of social media side of things. It's not anything that I've ever been really super into or like confident, like confident about like going on camera or like taking pictures and, and documenting. Every time I go in a bar, I'm not taking a picture, even though like I've been to plenty of bars that I've really liked you know, uh, my personality, I, I end up just like talking to the people that are there more, you know, I'll talk to bartenders and, and, and people and I won't spend as much time, you know, Instagramming and, and, and tagging and whatnot. But a competition like that, it kind of like forces you to, to do that a little bit and you've got to look at all facets of it and kind of like figure stuff out. And it's, it's cool. It's, it's really, really good. Um, For the folks at home, Jack, what was uh, your Mai Tai recipe? So it was devised by myself and also a lovely chap called Dave. 
um, Aussie oh, Dave, who sadly isn't with us right now. He is all the way he's in. I made, I made him sound like he's dead. <laughs> he's uh, <laughs> he's, he's, not he's dead. Um, in he's Melbourne. Just in Australia. Yeah, which is yeah. Also the same thing as being dead. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, myself and Dave, we devised our own little Mai Tai spec, and my God, off memory. So, if I remember rightly, it was twenty-two and a half mil of lime. It was then. God, I feel like I'm going to butcher this so bad. I'm pretty sure that it was. Um, I put him on the spot, and he's not. He's not rising to it. No, all. no, no. Yeah, no. I've got it. I've got it now. I've got it. So, 20, 22 and a half mil lime. Um, it was thirty mil of regular chairman's reserve, fifteen mil of um, chairman's forgotten cask. We then made our own like curacao, and it was basically a blend of apricot, uh, apricot, apricot brandy, um, falernum, and chairman's white infused with loads and loads of like orange peel together. So there was, I believe it was fifteen mil of that. So 20, 22 and a half mil lime, fifteen mil of our homemade curacao. 30 mil of chairman's reserve and 15 mil chairman's forgotten cask. Basically shook all that up, strained it over cubed ice, and then the garnish for it was a dehydrated like orange wheel or orange disc. But then what we did was we floated a little bit of chairman spiced on it and set it on fire. So it smelled like really, really nice. So the idea that myself and Dave were going for was to have a basically have a Mai Tai that incorporated all four expression, expressions of chairman's in it. And uh, it was boozy and it was tasty. It was very delicious. Uh, um, yeah, I to blow our own trumpet, it was good. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to the final. Um, like I said, the criteria, the marking criteria for, for it is the, it's everything you marked on, the actual right. taste of the drink, how you promote it, the idea behind it, the, the full shebang. Um, and I think we fell slightly short, but we did get invited to the final that was in London. Um, and everything that was on display that night was great. You got to try all the different Mai Tais. And again, you were kind of marking them. You got to vote for your favorite at the end. But it was a little bit of an incorporation of everything. It was, you know, were the bartenders engaging? Did they put on a bit of a show? Was the drink presented nicely? Was it tasty? You know, the full work. So it was really good just to get involved in something like that and see. And, and again, it's a prime example of a competition that it sort of pushes you out of your comfort zone a little bit, but it also encourages you to get out there and, and meet other people. Do you know and, what I mean? I'm just waiting for you to say that none of them were as good as yours. No, no, they, I mean, they were all <laughs> great. Like there was, there was some, uh, there was some really, really good some really, really good ideas and drinks. Um, obviously, it got <laughs> it got a little bit hazy, maybe towards the end. So, it, it's, you know, it's like I could barely recall my own cocktail recipe, let alone <laughs> half a dozen other people's <laughs> at this point. But um, no, it was a really, really good experience. Um, and I feel like a competition like this will be somewhat similar. You know, it'll be um, yeah. It's just a really nice way to keep people engaged and, and give them something to, to do and something to look forward to as well, which is which is really cool. Yeah, yeah I think, uh, you know, it, we've obviously got a really good relationship with um, the guys from St. Lucia Distillers and Emporia, etc. cetera. Um, you know, we stock everything, <laughs> pretty much everything, right, that they have uh, that comes out of St. Lucia um, on kind of the... Uh, a consistent and not so consistent basis. I know um, we're very lucky to have some of the 1931s that I don't think anyone else has in the north of England. Yeah. Um, you know, there's probably two or three places in the whole of the UK that stock them. I think some of the expressions we have anyway, uh, which is really nice. Uh, but the reason why we like people like this is because they are, and to not sound really Liverpoolian about it, Everyone's dead sound. <laughs> yeah, <that's nice laughs> <and fun. laughs> you know, like all of these people that we interact with from kind of we look after stuff like that are really nice people, and you know we know them very well, um, which is good. Um, a few exciting things coming up. 
So we're probably going to do some more of these, no doubt. It's kind of slowly start wrapping up. I mean, Jack will probably start waffling again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we've got uh, Rumfest, Manchester Rumfest. Um, organised by one of our very good friends Dave has been rescheduled because it was supposed to be so it's going to be April the 4th yeah, yeah so. um, but obviously this whole thing which is great for me because I was supposed to be in Mexico uh, so I wouldn't have been able to go so. silver lining <laughs> glass half full I like it it's good <laughs> yeah exactly uh, and it's now rescheduled for the 29th of August in Manchester and it is at, where is it at? I can't remember Jack the name of the venue, you know. Right at the warehouse. There we go. That's the one. Uh, yeah. Which would be really fun. There is well, it sounds like I mean, they've, got, they've compiled like a super solid lineup of people there. I feel like the... Ridiculous the amount of people that are going like... Yeah. There. Like if it, you want to, I think it, it's like 22 per tickets or Oh yeah, the, I mean the value for it will be ridiculous. The the amount of different um, brands that are there, stuff that's being showcased is uh, unreal. Yeah. Do you want me to do like a very quick list of people that are there? Sure. Yeah. Like, just yeah, yeah, do some of the heavy hitters or something. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, we've got Claremont, Chairman's Reserve, uh, Neptune Room, Pusses, uh, Brindle Distillery, uh, Nord, um, Tireless, nice. uh, Ray and Nephew, Coco Canoe, Appleton, uh, Jay Yao, represent, uh, Diplomatico, Hampton, Clarin, Veritas. Nice. Living <laughs> Cross, Black Top, uh, um, William George, which is delicious. Delicious. Um, yeah. City of Manchester, Slurry, Foursquare, Dawleys, Goslings, um, Abuela, Kashasha, Plantation, Bray Brothers and Rudd, Mount Gay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll put it this way. I, I think if that's if that's um, not enough to if that's not enough to interest you, then soggy yeah. dollar. I'm excited to try them. <laughs> Put it that way. There's loads of interesting names. There's loads of people there. There's loads of cool. People. Yeah. Um, and then we've got what else have we got coming up this year? Uh, there is London Rum, well, Rum Week essentially, isn't it? Yeah, I um, think so. Which is, I believe, October. Let me just double check the date. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's like right around the time they do imbibe, I mean, isn't it? It's the week, it's the week after uh, London Cocktail Week. Right. Uh, so everyone's probably already hung over anyway, and then we go and drink loads of rum. Probably not going to end well. Um, but it's always fun. It's always great. Um, I believe it is the 29th. No, sorry, I'm lying. It's the uh, 17th to the 18th of October. Cool. Cool. Um, tickets well, aren't available until July. Yeah. Like, well, hopefully by then, you know, all this situation will have breezed over. You know, hopefully we're at the other at the other end of it. Yeah, and then we can all drink rum together again, which would be great. Because me just drinking on my own like this is a bit depressing. Hey, you're not doing it by yourself. You're doing it with me and and anyone that's out there. So. <laughs> Right, well, should we wrap it up for today then? Um, and then, yeah, maybe come back to this at some point in the next few days, have another little chat, see if anyone's had any questions for us in the meantime. And, uh, yeah, well, yeah, just more finish then. I mean, if anyone uh, wants to ask any questions, um, basically, if you've seen this on whatever media you're seeing it on, just comment underneath it. And me and Jack have got nothing else to do, so we'll probably read it and then either answer it kind of in the comments or we will do a little bit on it if it's an interesting enough question yeah absolutely so, absolutely um sure i think we've got some really exciting topics to talk about so if you think this one's a bit boring <laughs> and we've been a bit <laughs> waffling on a bit um i think um it's hopefully only going to get a bit better once we're a bit more used to doing this because it's the first time we've ever done it so yeah uh yeah that's about it